Good day, everyone, and welcome to this Palm Sunday at the Jesuit Institute. Palm Sunday marks the beginning of Holy Week, and we know that Holy Week concludes with the Sacred Tridium. And so at the Jesuit Institute, we will be making available on our YouTube channel the Mass of the Lord's Supper on Thursday evening at 6 p.m., Good Friday, the Good Friday service at 3 p.m., and on Easter Sunday, we will be broadcasting an Easter Sunday Mass, as we always do every Sunday at 9 a.m. We hope that in these days, you will be able to enter into this most sacred time, this most sacred week in the church's year. May God bless you all. Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Anthony Egan. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we are celebrating Palm Sunday, the Passion of the Lord. I just want to start by saying if anyone has a branch that they want uh, to just hold while we are doing this part of our Mass, it might be wise just to pause at this moment and... Go and fetch a branch. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. At that time, a great crowd who had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm leaves and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand this at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that this had been written of him and had been done to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the days of ancient Rome, when emperors took office or conquering generals returned, great public spectacles were arranged. The crowds came, mostly willingly, but sometimes unwillingly, to cheer. The man, they were always men, of the hour rode in on a chariot or on horseback, normally accompanied by a great army dressed in their finest. His head was adorned by a laurel wreath. 
they were greeted by the notables, the who's who of Rome. And more often than not, in the course of the festivities, people died. Prisoners, defeated enemies, or the slave gladiators who put on a show of death in the arena later. Today, we recall a different kind of triumph. It is the triumph of a hitherto unknown peasant who rides into Jerusalem on a donkey. He wears no crown. Well, not yet. His army, if you call it that, is a ragtag bag of disciples, most of them from the lower echelons of society. And those who greet him are common people, who see in him a different kind of hero, a different kind of king. Perhaps that's the point of the story, the subtle upturning of Roman convention, the parody of how power asserts itself, even perhaps a whisper of a different kind of power breaking into human history, the power of leadership based on service, a power that subverts the vanity of the powerful. He will not be crowned a king, however. He will leave Jerusalem in a few days, triumph turned into apparent defeat. He will not wear the laurels of victory, not yet, but a crown of thorns. And the crowds that cheered him will be replaced by a jeering mob. We cannot say for certain whether it's the same group as today or a renter crowd. But history teaches us that the mob is often fickle, swayed by demagoguery. Our story, as we shall read later, is by no means over. Nor indeed is that story the end, as we shall see next Sunday. But let us this week get into the story, get into it and think of many things, of power subverted, asserted, and subverted by resurrection, of the real understanding of a kingship of all under God. Let us pray. Almighty everlasting God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him that is weary. Morning by morning he wakens, he wakens my ear, to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been confounded. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. 
He trusted in the Lord. Let him save him. Let him release him, for in him he delights. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? For dogs have surrounded me. A band of the wicked besets me. They tear, tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. But you, O Lord, do not stay afar off. My strength make haste to help me. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I will tell of your name to my kin and praise you in the midst of the assembly. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All descendants of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant. Being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Praise to you. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the feast of unleavened bread, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the feast, lest there be a tumult of the people. And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of an ointment of pure nard, very costly, and she broke the jar and poured it over his head. But there were some who said to themselves indignantly, Why was the ointment thus wasted? For this ointment might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor, and they reproached her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, and whenever you will you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burying. And truly I say to you, whenever the gospel is preached in the whole world, What she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad. 
and promised to give him money, and he sought an opportunity to betray him. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the householder, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I am to eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city, and found it as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were at table eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful, and to say to him one after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread in the same dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread and blessed and broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a chalice, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to them, Truly, I say to you this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, If I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. And they went to a place which was called Gethsemane. And he said to the disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Remove this chalice from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It's enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I shall kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away safely. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Master, and he kissed him, and they laid hands on him and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword 
and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all deserted him and fled. And a young man followed him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body. And they seized him. But he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. And they led Jesus to the high priest. And all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes were assembled. And Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards and warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none. For many bore false witness against him, and their witness did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet not even so did their testimony agree. And the high priest stood up in their midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he was silent and made no answer. Again the high priest asked him, are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! And the guards received him with blows. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the maids of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway. And the maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while, again the bystanders said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the cock crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests, with the elders and the scribes, and the whole council held a consultation. And they bound Jesus and led him away, and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate wondered. Now at the feast he used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison, who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man named Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he always did for them. And he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, Then what shall I do with this man that you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out, Crucify, Crucify him. him! 
And Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, he delivered them to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and they called together the whole battalion, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and plaiting a crown of thorns, they put it on him, and they began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck his head with a reed, and spat upon him, and they knelt down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him, and they led him out to crucify him. And they were compelled as passed Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mingled with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests mocked him to one another with the scribes saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, Come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour came, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani? Which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders, hearing it, said, Behold, he is calling Elijah. And one ran, and filling a sponge full of vinegar, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. And when the centurion, who was facing him, saw that the, he thus breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from afar, among whom was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James, and the younger and of Joseph, and Salome, who, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered to him and also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. And when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. And he bought a linen shroud, and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud, and laid him in the tomb, which had been hewn out of the rocks. And he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us now profess our faith by saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Today we bring, as always, our prayers before the Lord. As we move into Holy Week, we pray that we may all model how we understand and use power according to Christ's example of the Servant King. We pray that the Church may lead by example in servant leadership. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear, hear us. We pray that we may see servant leadership in the conduct of those who govern society. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear, hear us. We pray especially for those who serve the poor, the marginalized, and the sick, especially in this time of pandemic. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear, hear us. We invite you to bring before the Lord your particular needs at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving God who comes to us as a servant king, may we be filled with that spirit of service for our neighbor, that we may truly serve you and be an example of your love to those whom we meet. And we make all our prayers in the name of Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of our sin, for our good and good of all our through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You're indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Booty, our Archbishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. As the Saviour commanded us, so let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, Behold, the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and our soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection 
you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. It's a blessing over the community. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us remain in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.